It's already the end of April, folks. I don't really know how I feel about that. So today I'm going to be sharing with you some favorites of mine throughout this month, a couple of fails, a couple of makeup fails, a high-end one, a drugstore one, and then just some other lifestyle favorites. I've got a shirt, some hair things, some skincare, some food and snacks. Even got some hangers to share with you guys, seriously. So let's start beauty as usual and let's start with the fails, shall we? Let's start on a real <laughs> negative note. First fail, this shocked me to my core. I really decided I don't think I like this Too Faced Natural Nudes. When I saw this online, I thought that is the most me palette I've ever seen. Looking at the colors, I'm like, oh yeah, like I could see myself wearing every single one of these shades. I love that it's shimmer and matte. There's something about the formula of this that doesn't feel the same as like their chocolate bar palettes that I loved long ago. The shimmers aren't the same. They're almost chunky, they're not. Like when you feel them, they're smooth, but glitter just pops around everywhere when you like swatch it. I don't know that I can capture that on camera. Even as someone that likes more of a wash of color like I have on today, I could achieve that with this, but it would be with glitter fallout everywhere and it just was still a little patchy. It was so weird, you guys. So this is one I had actually had on my shopping list to buy a, lot, a few months ago. They ended up sending it in PR even though I have asked Too Faced numerous times to take me off their freaking PR list. I've even like DM'd them on like social media. I know this is a ridiculous thing to complain about. If you've been here for my history with PR and especially with Too Faced PR, you know why I'm feeling the way I am. I'm not gonna get into that here. I think I have a video about just PR in general and why I can link that video. If you're like, why would you complain about that? I know how it sounds, trust me. Just watch that video and it explains it, I think, better than I will right now. Okay, anyway, big old bummer to me, and that's an expensive palette, nearly $50, right? I just, no, thumbs down. Another fail, this Revlon Candid Glow. <sighs> you know, I tried it pretty recently on my channel and I've tried it a couple times since then. It always looks like it's sitting on top of my skin. And for a product like this, that's kind of supposed to be more moisturizing and you know, with a little coverage, that's exactly what I like. And it doesn't perform at all like the products that do this for me do that I like, you know what I mean? So I know what it could be and it's just not that, which is why I'm like, I don't even need to waste my time anymore. It just doesn't perform the way I need it to perform. It just looks a little streaky. And once it blends in, it still catches weird, even on dry areas, even though it's a moisturizing formula. So it's a big pass for me too. Here's like my earrings. You guys know I love hoops. These are like these thicker ones and I love them. I found them on Amazon, but honestly, I thought they'd be a little bit bigger. I was kind of disappointed when I saw the size, but at the same time, they're pretty cool. I've realized I have to, cause my daughter pulls out my earrings sometimes. I have to have hoops that are like this where, you know what I mean? So if she pulls it out, it's not gonna rip my ear out. It'll just open up. Um, gross, that sounded so gross. But. Okay, oh my gosh, favorite, maybe of the month, like best, like literally have to force myself to try other things. The MAC So Natural Blush. This is from their Glow Play line. I like this better than the Bare Minerals Bounce and Blur, and those were the bomb. They still are, I love them, I have two shades of that. But this is just slightly creamier, I think, and so when I'm applying it with like a stippling brush, I can literally press it into my cheek, and it just looks so natural and gorgeous, and it's just right. It's perfectly blended every time. I freaking love this. Now, it looks raggedy because it fell completely out the day I got this in the mail, from Ulta, I think, I, yeah, Ulta I ordered it from. Anyway, so I had to literally press it back in. It works just fine, I just literally pressed it with my finger since it's kind of creamy, kind of powdery. That's what's so unique about this. I'm realizing I didn't even explain it. If you've never heard of this, this line of blushes are like a cream, but it's more like putty-like, but not like, it's different still than like ColourPop blushes, I feel like. I don't know, it's so unique, but it actually stays, and I literally cannot stop using this. I cannot stop using it. Oh, the lip product I'm wearing that I can't put down is from Revlon. It's that new line that I told you guys I think is a very, very close dupe line-wise to the Revlon lip butters they used to have long ago. So my favorite shade is Nude Illuminator. They actually, so I bought this in another shade, and then I happened to get Revlon PR in the mail a little while ago with a bunch more shades. So I was like, well, so I haven't tried those yet, but I'm just saying, these are like the perfect spring summer lip where it's low key, there's definitely color to it. See, you can see it right there, but it's got this glossy, comfortable formula and I just love it. I do think these do better with a lip liner today. I just use the Milani Easy Liner in Most Natural and it looks great with it, but I just think these are 
fantastic. They feel like high-end lip products that I've loved over the years, like from YSL, feel so similar to that. I don't, like if you blindfolded me and had me test this next to like a YSL, like balmy stain, I would not know the difference. They're so, so similar. So love this. If you can find a shade that would be perfect for you, I highly recommend. That's like the ultimate purse lipstick. <laughs> you know what I mean? This is one I have touched on before. It's from Bobbi Brown and I, I feel like I used to give it a lot of love and I haven't talked about it in a while. It's disgusting. I just ordered a new one at the Sephora VIB sale. So I'm getting a new one, thank goodness, because I am scraping the bottom and it's looking real sketchy. And frankly, this is like old. What this is, is a creamy corrector. So for me, I'm realizing I don't need as much concealer as I really just need correcting right in that area where I'm so kind of purplish blue, right? The thing that makes this stand out amongst other correctors, in my opinion, is that it's the right amount of creaminess, but also that it'll stay put. You know what I mean? And so I brought, for example, this new Charlotte Tilbury corrector. I really like this. Like I'm not gonna declutter this anytime soon. I really like it. I have it in the lightest shade. However, as I've tried these side by side over the past week or two, I do think that the Bobbi Brown one is slightly creamier and so it doesn't look quite as dry in that area as this one does. This does not look bad though. Like I said, I've been using it like crazy and I will continue to, but if I'm picking a favorite out of the two, it is still the Bobbi Brown one. It's just that much, just that little bit better, which is unfortunate because of course the Charlotte Tilbury one's packaging is stupidly beautiful, but they're both great great products. So I want to show you a clip of me with the corrector on one side and then on the other side I don't have it and you can see a pretty stark difference in my opinion between with and without. Like it really does its job. It does not move. I still tend to set it with uh, the number seven lift and luminate powder. I, I know I'm a broken record. It's the best under eye powder ever. It's $12. You can buy it at Target online and I think Walgreens online. And the thing is you can use that in conjunction with like regular liquid concealers, you know, like if you just wanted to put it there and then use other concealer in that area. I lately have just been using that no concealer, but you really can do it either way. I've done it both ways. Like it just depends on what you need, what you want, how you want your finished look, but it does a great job even on its own too. Now, if you're going to be using it right in the fine line area, it's going to crease like any concealer does, so just be aware of that. But again, if you're using it right there, mwah. I love this palette. This is from M Cosmetics, and the reason I, I've mentioned before I hesitate to talk about it is it's harder to get because you have to order it from the M Cosmetics site, period. So definitely if you're gonna do it, wait for a promo code, wait for a sale, free shipping, whatever. What's unfortunate is when I bought this, I really, really wanted to buy the color serum blushes, that's like the serum drops but they were sold out of the color I wanted, of course, and I was like, whatever. So I ordered this and I'm still wanting that. This is the Divine Skies eyeshadow palette. I don't know what it is about this, but it feels like a special palette to me. If you've been eyeing the Charlotte Tilbury palette, but you've kind of gone back and forth because you're just not sure about the price point, this is a little bit cheaper. So actually it's a decent amount cheaper. The M Cosmetics one is $38 and the Charlotte Tilbury one is 53. So you save 15 bucks and you get more colors with the M Cosmetics. And I feel like formula wise, they are so, so, so similar. But I just think the packaging is unique. It feels really nice. The colors are so gorgeous. So I like to swipe this pinky shade all over, like almost all the way to the brow bone. And then I'll sometimes tap the other two shimmers on the lid, like this lighter one looks really pretty tapped on the center of the lid, which is what I did today. I use this lighter matte kind of in the crease, a little bit of the brown in the outer corner. I mean, I literally use virtually every shade and I just love it. It's got a nice mirror and it's so compact and cute and useful. And I just, I think it's a great palette. I feel like gone are the days that I'm obsessing over larger palettes or not gone are the days. Cause like I've said, I have a lot that I still love, but I definitely am finding myself leaning more into these kinds because they're just more convenient, you know? And it's got, you know, if it's a curated collection of like six shades, I can probably use all of those, whereas a palette of like 20 colors, I'm like, okay, how many of these am I really using, you know? Oh, we have a skincare, sorry, I'm double fisting water and coffee, okay? Just, my mother-in-law had this made for me. It was from our trip to Europe with Gigi, and it, I just love this, it's so sweet. I'm gonna be honest, I wanted to talk about the L'Oreal Bambi Eye Mascara today, but I saw that I mentioned it in last month's favorite, so I won't, but it's the mascara I'm wearing today, and it just took me by surprise. It's such a good mascara. It volumizes, it separates, it curls, like it does it all. Let's talk skincare. Okay, this is one that is pricier, but there is a drugstore 
alternative that you can use and that's probably what I'm gonna buy honestly when I run out of this because this was sent to me in PR so it's the Trilogy certified organic rosehip oil okay rosehip oil I have been applying off and onto my skin just here and there but lately I've gotten really into it because I have like it's almost gone scars from where I had a few moles removed last year from at the at my dermatologist just to make sure they weren't cancers they were not um, I did do a whole video on that experience. If you're curious about like going to the dermatologist for the first time, you're like, what should I expect? I was so nervous. So, and you can see it in the video, I was so nervous. So I can link that if you've just been curious. I know right now you might not be, but in the future when things normalize a bit, it's important to go and get everything checked out. And like I said, I did have two moles removed just in case. So rosehip seed oil can be great for scarring. And the one on the back of my neck, I always ask my husband, cause I'm like, can you put this necklace on for me? And I always ask him like, hey, how's my scar look? And he's like, it's almost non-existent. I'm like, wow. So this helps with scarring, but that aside, it is so amazing for your skin. I love to tap it onto my skin. I'll switch off with this and my Love 31 oil from Maylove kind of every other night, but I put it on after moisturizer and I just feel like like it does such a great job of evening my skin tone out. It's just a powerful, wonderful oil. The Ordinary makes one that I used to have. I think I used some of it up, but I think it went bad because I wasn't using it religiously then. Try that one out. That's what I'm gonna be trying out again next after this one, but huge skincare superstar. And it is so simple, you know, uh, side story. So today I was getting ready and my daughter, just so I could have the 30 minutes to like actually do my makeup, my daughter was watching Daniel Tiger's Neighborhood and she was kind of grabbing makeup off the vanity and I'd pulled things out for the favorites video and I was getting ready with them. So she grabbed the mascara and she's 23 months. I didn't think she knew to twist this and then open it. Well, she did. And so I look at her and I see all this black around her nose. She had taken this and stuffed up her nose. And then of course she's touching it and she's going smelly <laughs> and she's got it all over her fingers. I'm like, oh my gosh, I got it all cleaned up. But holy moly, I'm like, well, you learn something new every day. Apparently she does too. Okay, this one I'm excited to talk about. These I bought on Amazon. There are these little hair clips that are supposed to be creaseless. So like when you're doing your makeup or whatever, and maybe you've already done your hair, the idea of this is that you can hold your hair back and it doesn't leave a dent or a crease in your hair where that was. Now that's not always essential for me because you know my hair is kind of naturally wavy so if it's wavy it's not as important. But it's also just nice generally to keep your hair out of your face while you're doing it because some bobby pins, like especially decorative ones, I love them, but they can get caught in your hair kind of weird. So it's nice that these don't do that. There's a pack of some white ones, some black ones, and some pink. They had all different combinations. They were pretty inexpensive. So I wanted to give those some love because I feel like I'm seeing them everywhere now and it took me a minute to like figure out what to call them to even find them on Amazon. You know what I mean? So I think I typed in like creaseless hair clips, but I can link these exact ones below. Quick shout out to this Chloe Nomad perfume. The lid is lost because again, toddlers. I, it's somewhere in my bedroom. I'm sure I'll trip on it like in the middle of the night tonight going to the bathroom. There's something so wonderful about this perfume, you guys. It's sweet, but not too sweet. It smells sensual, but sweet. It's not crazy floral. It's not crazy anything. It is like the perfect middle of the road perfume. And every time, I haven't sprayed it on yet today. Every time I wear this, I'm like, yes, like it, oh my gosh. And it's been a while since I have discovered a perfume, a new perfume to me that I felt this strongly about. I know I just talked about this in my spring favorites video. I talked about a couple perfumes cause I was working with fragrance.com on that video. So I was featuring quite a few, but this is my ultimate favorite right now. I had to give it some more love. Okay, this is a weird favorite. When we moved into this house a couple of years ago, I was like, I want to have nice hangers, right? And so I went on the hunt and kind of did some research and it sounded like a lot of people recommended the velvet kind of hangers. And so I bought some over the years and some of them break and some of them, you know, but I really do love them. They save space in your closet because they're thinner than like the white ones you might have, like the plasticky ones I had before. And on top of that, they don't give as many marks like on your shirts if you have them hanging. I don't notice that as much. And nothing slips off of them. I have all kinds of tank tops and stuff hanging in there and they would always fall off even with the little hooks on the white. Nothing falls off of these. I think they are so fantastic. So I just bought a 50 pack on Amazon because I had broken a bunch of them. And so I just needed some more. It's getting to that point where I, when I would do laundry, I'm like, oh no, I don't have any more hangers. So they would just drape on the back of like a chair until I could hang them up five days later when I wore like five more shirts. It, I'm ridiculous. And these are so, so nice. The reviews on these particular ones were really good, which is why I bought them. They also have black. So like my husband has black ones on his side of the closet. I have the beige. 
I'm sure they probably even sell like light pink. But the other thing is when stores reopen, TJ Maxx is a place where you can get this kind of hanger for really cheap too. So don't feel like you have to buy it on Amazon, but I do really like these ones. So okay, so I've been seeing tie-dye long sleeve shirts all over my Instagram, all over. So I got one in a chunk club. I can link the exact one from Nordstrom that I have, but I also found a bunch on Clarence. I was literally standing in the checkout line at the grocery store, you know, I'm masked up and everything ready to go. Everyone is spaced so far apart. So I was spaced so far back that I was right near the clothes. If you have a Meyer near, near you, I'm assuming they're all set up the same. You know how the women's clothes are like right by the checkout lanes anyway. So I'm right there and I'm looking and there's a clearance rack and I'm like, well, so I'm kind of glancing and I saw a bunch of tie dye shirts. I'm like, no way. So I bought two and they were literally like four or $5, but this is one of the ones I got, but I guess I just really wanted to shout out just kitschy pastel tie dye shirts. I think it's so fun that they're kind of becoming trendy again. It makes me think of being in fifth grade and wearing chokers and awful tie dye and like body glitter from Bath and Body Works and all of that stuff, that's what it makes me think of. So I'm kind of just loving it and really leaning into the trend because it's just fun. You can definitely find them on Amazon, Old Navy, like everywhere sells this kind of shirt right now. So I have seen like the TikTok, you know, people dye, tie dyeing their own stuff. I haven't done that. I don't know that I have anything to tie dye that, that I don't care about right, right now. Let's you talk know. snacks and then we're gonna talk some shows and songs. So quick mention, I already mentioned the hit piece that I love and I mentioned the white cheddar. So many of you guys recommended I try the Sriracha Sunrise flavor of these. These are puffs that are made of chickpeas. So they're gluten-free if you are gluten-free. I'm not like my mom is, so I was telling her about these. So typically I would get like a big bag of the hit peas, the white cheddar flavor at Costco. Well this, they only sell the small ones at my grocery store, the Meyer that I go to. So I got the Sriracha Sunshine. I don't even like spice. These are not spicy like that, like not at all. So if that's gonna turn you off, don't let it. These taste so delicious. I feel like if you mix the nacho cheese and the Cooler Ranch Dorito flavor with a teensy bit of like a different flavor, you'd get this that's all over these. These are so good. The bag is of course almost gone. My husband tried them and was like, oh my gosh. I'm like, yeah. So we're definitely gonna be buying more of these. I can tell you with certainty. Next favorite though, I think I talked about these maybe in a vlog in the past. These, the brand is Inno Foods and it's their dark chocolate nuggets with coconut. I have to hide these from myself. <laughs> and the reality is they're actually a really clean snack. The ingredients are like dark chocolate, coconut, pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds, chia seeds. So there's a lot of good in it, but it is still a sugary snack. Let me just show you. They're like these little clumps of chocolate. And I'm telling you the ratio of sweetness, cause it is dark chocolate, it's not overly sweet but you've got the crunch of the seeds and the different texture of the coconut chunks. And it is the most magical, most delicious snack. And as I was looking these up online, cause I was like, okay, if I'm gonna mention these to you, I want you to be able to get them. This bag is 18 ounces. It's a pretty big bag. This lasts me a while. It's like $20 on Amazon and it's typically like $10 at Costco. But I was looking at Costco online and they don't sell it online. So I'm like, oh no. So just be aware you can find it online. It might be a little pricey. I will say it's worth every penny because if you like coconut, this will be your favorite dessert like ever. So we started watching Ozark. Uh, I will admit we watched the first episode months and months ago. Didn't really like it cause it's a darker show. Um, and I'm like, I feel like we watch plenty of dark shows. I need some light in my life. Thank you very much. But so we watched that episode months ago. We really weren't into it. So we never did. Well, our good friends got into it and then now everyone's talking about it. And so we're like, all right, maybe we'll give it another try. So we rewatched the first episode and now we're like four or five episodes in and now we get it. It's it, you just are so curious to see how it all ends up. And if you've never seen it, it's about this family that based on what the father does for his job, kind of something happens and the family has to relocate from Chicago to the Ozarks in, well, Missouri, right? We were there actually in like near Branson at a cabin, what, a year or two ago with my family. It was so, it was so much fun actually. So it's just following their life there, being uprooted there, but it's the crimes that are going on and the people they're meeting in the Ozarks. And it's, it's very, very interesting. It really is. And the character arcs already are pretty interesting. So I'm curious to see how that goes. And it's freaking Jason Bateman and Laura freaking Linney. And they are both so good in my opinion that I just, I would watch it just for them. Also, it's called Ozark. And I always laugh when people call it Ozarks. It's kind of like how I call Aldi, Aldi's. I used to call Kroger, Kroger's. Favorite song. This is an older one, but it, 
I have a playlist, I like my 2020 playlist that I've just been listening to kind of on repeat. So I was kind of going through that. I'm like, what am I really loving that I haven't talked about yet? And I feel like in the past few weeks, when this whole quarantine first started, I was listening to a lot of music. I think I was just kind of moody, you know? And so I just was, but the past few weeks I really haven't. But one song that I just think is very appropriate right now is from John Mayer and it's called Split Screen Sadness. I've probably talked about this in a video before. It's one of my favorites from him. I'm a big old John Mayer fan. I just am. I, his newer stuff is kind of hit or miss for me. Regardless, it's, it's just a good song, especially, especially if you listen to the lyrics. I feel like a lot of his songs sound good. So if you're listening to them on surf, like at a surface level, you're like, oh yeah, it's, it's nice. But when you really start like listening to the words, he really is pretty darn poetic. And he has a way with words and the way he puts words to things that maybe you thought, but you never knew how to word, if that makes sense. So Split Screen Sadness is so good. And of course, it's kind of about long distance and things like that. And I, ooh, I just love it. So I hope that you enjoyed this. If you did, I'd love if you subscribed. It makes my videos easier for you to find in the future. If you want to binge some of my videos, I have some of my playlists down in the description box that I think are pretty darn binge worthy. Come say hi to me on social media. It is at it's Jessica Braun everywhere. Of course, don't forget to check out our weekly vlogs. We upload on the weekends, typically on Saturdays over on my husband's channel, which is Tyler Travels TV. I always talk about like makeup and beauty in those two. We'll share what we're cooking. We'll share what we're doing to stay busy, what shows we're watching, etc. So it's like this but in vlog form. <laughs> Actually, I just kind of like that. Anyway, I love you all. Thank you so much for watching this entire video. Holy moly. Bye. <laughs>